this message is called The Identical. The ancient rabbinical writings record that on Yom Kippur, the two goats, sacrifice and scapegoat, had to look identical. So you could not tell them apart. They were considered as one, one sacrifice, identification, transference, one becomes the other. They had to look alike, identical. So now you have Yeshua, Jesus, and you have Barabbas. Yeshua, the sacrifice, Barabbas, the one for whom he dies. Sin offering and sinner. Barabbas, the sinner representing all of us, each of us. We're Barabbas. And everybody who Messiah would die for, each. Because he died for all, but he died for each. So you got one each there representing all of us. Now we don't know what Messiah looked like exactly. In the announcements, there was a picture of the shroud. One day I may speak on that. But we do know that Messiah had a beard because the Jewish people had beards. It was even in the law. We know he looked Jewish. But the two goats had to be identical. Messiah and Barabbas. Could it be that Messiah and Barabbas looked alike? We don't know. But the mystery is deeper than that. When we think of the two, it's hard to think of two different people than they. Two different human beings than Yeshua and Barabbas. The most holy one, the son of the living God, the son of the Father, and the the son of God and the criminal, the thief, the one, the thief who took life and the gift of God who gave life. Barabbas, the evil one, Yeshua, the good. Barabbas, the criminal. Messiah, the son of the father, the son of the most high. You got a criminal and you have the son of the father. But there's a mystery. We've always heard of Barabbas. The first time I ever heard of Barabbas is when I was growing up. At 4.30, they used to have on Channel 7 here, they used to have movies. And one was a movie called Barabbas. The name Barabbas brings up images of a criminal, violent, rough. The name connected to all that. But there's a mystery. We think of Barabbas, we think criminal. There's a mystery behind the name. Barabbas wasn't his real name. Not exactly. Barabbas is a Greek version of a Hebrew name. His real name was Bar, as in Bar Mitzvah. Bar meaning the son, and Abbas, Abba, meaning the father. His name was the son of the father. Bar Abba, the son of the father. So on one hand, you have Messiah, the son of the father, and you have Barabbas, the son of the father. The two must be identical. Ident identical. Here they are, identical by name. And it's a choice. They're going to make a choice between the son of the father or the son of the father. Baraba, Messiah, Baraba, and Baraba, Barabbas. In Hebrew, they wouldn't have thought of Barabbas. It would be Baraba. Messiah is Baraba. Messiah is Barabbas because Barabbas means son of the father. He is the bar of the Abba. Bar, Abba, Barabbas, and Barabbas. So on that day, the mystery that the one stands for the other, the two become one. Yeshua, the true son of the father, the true, it's going to sound strange, but the true Barabbas, Bar Abba, standing for the other one, name that. The mystery of Passover, what's that? On Passover, what happens? The lamb dies for the one who has a death sentence over them, but the lamb dies for the son. So here now the lamb is dying for the man called the son. The lamb dies for the Barabbas, the son of the father. And here it is. Now on Passover, you have them again. You have the son and you have the lamb. The two are joined together as in Passover. They've got to be joined together, even with his name. That's why the son can go free on Passover. So the mystery is there even from the beginning. Genesis 22, when Abraham leads Isaac up the mountain, Isaac is the son Abraham, his name means the father. Isaac is the Bar Abba, the son of the father, the Barabbas. And so Bar, the, Bar, the Bar Abba, the son of the father, the Barabbas, Isaac, says, where is the lamb? Isaac, the Barabbas, has a death sentence over him. He is bound. 
He's about, it's about to come just as Barabbas had the death sentence. But Isaac, this first, this Barabbas, says, where's the lamb? The father answers, God will provide himself the lamb for the offering, my son. And then Barabbas, Barabbas, 2,000, 1,000 and so years later, more than that, Barabbas, on the day of Passover, sees the lamb. Isaac asks, where's the lamb? Barabbas sees the lamb. The sacrifice dies in the place of Isaac, the son of the father. So the sacrifice dies in the place of Barabbas, the son of the father. An age later, you know, it said, actually, Abraham said, said, God will provide himself the lamb. And then Moses, who's recording this whole event, Moses writes at the end, he says, in that place it will be seen. In that place, the place, the name of that mountain is now the Lord shall provide. Provide what? It's obvious the lamb will be provided on that same mountain. What mountain? Jerusalem. Mount Moriah. So an age later, now you have Barabbas standing on that same mountain, son of the father like Isaac, on Mount, with a death sentence over him like Isaac. And when Isaac was about to be killed, the sacrifice was provided on that same mountain. Barabbas is about to be killed the lamb is provided on the same mountain, Mount Moriah. And now here, what happens? What does it say? When, when, when Abraham found the sacrifice, Isaac, what happened to Isaac? He was untied from the wood. He was tied. He was released. And so it says, and Isaac is the Barabbas. And so now it says that Barabbas was released. He released Barabbas and delivered Yeshua to be crucified. The Lord will provide. The Hebrew where it says the Lord will provide on that mountain also could be translated, the Lord will make manifest. The Lord will make appear. That on the mountain, the Lord will make the lamb appear on that mountain when there is a son about to be killed. The two join together. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts or get in touch, Go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Hope of the World is dedicated to the goal of spreading God's Word and salvation to every land and people. We do this by spreading the word throughout the world and sponsoring compassion projects to the most poor and needy around the earth. To get in touch or have a part in God's work, just write to Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Or go to hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1 that's 1-800-937-4821.